Hi guys, Tom here. Hey, I want to do a get back to this uh, Robart retracts for the uh, Jerry Bates Wildcat. Um, if you watched my other video, you'll see that I had it all pretty well working and done with an air version of it. Um, it's been a quite a while, probably about two and a half years since I had that last video out here with the air version. And then, hey, if you're into RC flying, you know how that is. You end up buying another project, you're out at the field, something goes wrong, and you're fixing that. So basically, this went into the back burner for a while, had all other kinds of things. Matter of fact, even retired in the last two and a half years. So I finally started getting back to it a little by little, the whole time thinking of this whole situation of making it a little bit better than air. Got a lot of responses from the last video, um, saying a little bit about the, uh, the mechanisms and stuff like that. So I went back and started figuring out how to maybe do this a little bit simpler. And I came up with this whole version here now. If you notice, I took out all the air system completely out of it. There's no chains at all in this now. And we're using direct drive servos here. Um, it works excellent to me. It's flawless. It works very well. Um, I'll explain it, show it to you in a minute. On the other video, the other ones with the air, I had these, you'll, you'll take notice, a little bit loose going for the, for the little bit of the, uh, the uh, twisting and turning. I got a few comments on that too, that maybe it was just the frame that I made, and that's probably true on a lot of that stuff. That this is very lightweight frame that I made here to demonstrate this thing, and it was twisting a little bit here. So I actually loosened these up on the other version, the air version. These here are nice and tight now, so there's no more loosening. You make them as tight as you have to. And then I converted it over, got rid of all this, and changed it to two direct servos. Tried other servos, came eventually that it really works well. No sounds, no humming noises at the end of the throw, like you've seen on servos or flaps. They'll sit and buzz and stuff like that. That's what this was doing. So I tried to get away with all that. So let me just show it to you for right now, and then we'll go from there. Then I'll explain how we've done it. Okay, um, let me just turn this all on. I'll show you how well it works, how quiet it works. You can move the speeds up and down. You can change one versus the other. Um, they're independently going up and down. Uh, let me see if I'm on here. All right, we're on, we're on now. Let me try it here. We got the gear obviously is down. Here's up. Very nice and smooth. They work very well. Now the magnets at the top takes the pressure off the servos as you're flying and stuff like that. But it's, it's not enough stickage, you, you want to say, or magnetism to hold them up at all. But then when you turn the switches, they go down. They work very well. They're pretty much, uh, I, this is what's going in the plane. Um, why I'm doing this video now is because I'm ready to install them in the plane. Wanted to show um, my last version of what I was doing here. But they work first time, every time. They work very well. I used JR8911 servos. Um, I've tried other servos. Again, I was saying that I'm having that buzzing sound. After I came up with these servos, they work excellent. Um, of course, there are, I, I would believe they're somewhere like around 700 inch pounds or, or um, 700 um, inch ounces. So um, plenty of torque on them. Again, we'll bring them up, bring them down. They work very well. Now, even even here's a situation that's, that, that works out very well. I... If when you turn the switch off, in other words, when you land the plane and you're going to taxi over, um, now you now you turn your switch off, you turn your fuel off. I've seen guys have braces in here to help hold this from falling out. In other words, these will stay pretty well. But now you can actually bring this up, okay, and hold it in the up position if you use a cradle to haul the thing and you don't want it sitting on the wheels any length of time. But also, if you look in here, I stuck magnets in this tube here, which sticks to this screw, okay? So when this comes down, like so here, it basically holds it, locks it. I'm hoping now, after I put it in the plane, I'm not gonna need no brace here. 
Okay, they're going to hold it rigid enough so you, you're only rolling it around a little bit, you know, in between flights and stuff like that. But if you do want to not, you know, store it for a while, keep it off its wheels, this is ideal. Just to do up, pop them up, and bring them back down. Okay, so that's the whole situation there. That's the way they work. They work very well. I'll, obviously, these I'll mount after I put it in the plane, see exactly where they got to go. Um, show you again one more time. Up and down. All right, let me turn the switch off. Let's go over this a little bit here. Let me show you what we've done here. This is, this is the body that came with the air systems that held this shaft and this sprocket onto the mounting of the, of the firewall or the, the, the landing gear wall. Okay, I've taken this set, got set screws under the bottom of them, undid the set screw, took this out and disassembled this from this and did away with these. But now for mounting this servo, I basically, if you see the holes where the mounting was, that's pretty much in line of where the servo is mounted, right here. Okay, so the, the alignment is pretty close. And I've even moved it around a little bit. It, you really got a lot of lead weight there. It's pretty simple to do. And then what I've done is I got myself a horn like this, a round one, and I used these round holes, okay? And I basically took this, this is one of the old ones of the other servers I was using, because this is a JR, the other one was a high tech, different spline numbers. So I got a different one for high for, for uh, JR. And what you really need to do is you got a ton of holes to work with. You sit there and you just start turning this dial, looking through these holes at the time, finding two holes that center right up with the holes. Obviously it was those two. Okay, marked them, drilled 440s is what I decided to use, 440 size bolts. And then I, I mounted it on here. Now if you take notice here, I use this tubing. This tubing just about fits that hole, okay, to use that size up. But this actually worked out great because after bolting this all together, this moves, okay? And this is a, basically a bushing in there. This tube goes through there, okay? Washer at both ends, tighten this up, and it made it swell, okay? When it's swelled, it swelled, it fills in the whole hole. Not tight, but not movable, okay? Now, this one's over here is loose. Let me explain something to you why I've done it that way. You see how that's pretty well? It's a little off, but it's pretty well lined up. Let me show you when it's in the up position here. And to take notice of this is when it's going up. You'll see that move. Now you see it's, it's fairly a little bit more on the tight side, meaning it's a little bit more of a different angle now when it's in the up position than when it's in the down position. So having this float just seems to make it the whole ticket. See how easy that floats now? No binding whatsoever. It just keeps working every time. So I just wanted to show it to you guys. Uh, this is my final version. I'm probably going to put it in the plane this week. Maybe do another video after it's in the plane and I can show you. So any questions, just let me know. Um, and we'll uh, take it from there, guys. So thanks a lot. Bye.